podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with a mental health professional. Now she laughing. She back. <laughs> she was tired. Woo! Hey, family. Welcome back to the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown, and our brother, Stephen James Dixon. Stephen James Dixon. Hey, my brother. Look, just tell people to subscribe. That's all they need to know. And just jump into it. Tell them what the podcast is. That's right. That's right. So please come on, y'all, family. I always forget to do this, though. Mm -hmm. But you remind me. Thank you. So please, right now, we need you. So click that little bell and subscribe. Like it. Share it. And if you feel froggy, jump. Put a comment down under it because we want to know what you are thinking. Okay, so Stephen, this is, oh my gosh, this is the sixth week to our six-week series. Yeah. Raise your hand if you watched all six podcasts. Right, what, what they at in there? They got a tag. They got to do something in there in the comments. Do something in the comments. Do something in the comments. Tell us in the comments. Yeah, that's good. Give us your feedback. Yeah, because I don't know if, if it costs more to get that on here. What? Because if that's the thing, we ain't got that. We, we but they can get tell us in the comments. We're going to get it. We're going to get the sponsorship. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so for all of y'all, oh, that'd be nice if we get, wouldn't that be nice if I like sent something you know products so you know i have the the candles i have books you have books um t-shirts hoodies that would be great if somebody maybe we should do an online a, a facebook a live quiz or something and we see what people have said or done and then we send something out i might be open to doing that if, if people subscribe and they email you uh -huh. I'll send out two free books. Oh, if they, you they subscribe mm -hmm. and then you email to awisebrown.com. Nope, that ain't it. That's you my tell your whole email. It's awisebrown at gmail.com. They yeah, got to make it. sure if they ain't subscribed, we're going to send them something bad. <laughs> Don't lie. We're going to check it. You can check the subscriptions. <laughs> Right. And then you're going to tell us you subscribed. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you email me. I'm going to send you to a Stevens books. And then I, in addition to that, I'm going to send a T-shirt. So I'm going to send a T-shirt, Mental Health is a Lifestyle T-shirt with one of Stevens books. Okay. That's a lot. They get a whole T-shirt. They get a whole T-shirt. See, we're doing two. T-shirts expensive. They are expensive. So we're going to stick with two. To can budget I, can I get the t-shirt? You can. You, you deserve a t-shirt. You really do. You've been here working. Uh -huh. Yeah, I should have gave you a t-shirt. We're having a good time, though. Yeah. Okay, y'all. So, today's topic is, I'm a man, mm -hmm. and I'm hungry for... Sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Uh -huh. Let's talk about... <laughs> do right? it. Do it. <laughs> And I'm hungry for sex. Yes, yes, especially with Valentine's Day. Yes, Valentine's Day is, yeah, Valentine's Day is, yeah, it's tomorrow. Right. Yes, and, okay. And so just want to make sure that we're setting the atmosphere, setting the environment, um, recharging our men, letting them know that, hey, uh, Valentine's Day is not, I mean, of course, there's some people who don't believe in it. Okay. They don't celebrate it. They don't celebrate it. Okay. It's made up. It's marketing. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Mm -hmm. We agree. Fine. Whatever. We're not here to argue that and all that. It's just to me an opportunity to mm -hmm. celebrate love. Don't give me the, we celebrate the every, who cares, man? Yeah. Do you, whatever. Get out of here. Uh, I, you can say it. You don't tell them Go get out of here. It. Go uh, with yeah, it. Yeah. Go I with mean, it. it's just for fun. You know, it's about just having fun. Mm -hmm. um, some wives, some women into it. Some are not. Mm -hmm. To me, it's more about fun. Uh, do you get feedback on stuff like that or? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you saying from women. So for men, yeah, men don't think it's a big deal. They think it's a ploy for them to spend more money. However, they understand that it is a part of maybe their, uh, what their partner likes. So they want to honor that and they will go to dinner or do the whole candy thing or just ask them for whatever they want. Yeah. Ask them for whatever they want. Ask them That's for what we're going to talk about <laughs> okay. is what we want. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Mm. Okay, we ain't talking about Valentine's Day because I was going to say, do you think that Valentine's Day, this honestly, if I was just to ask you this, mm -hmm. is for women or is it for men? So mm. this is what I mean. 
So, because women are usually expecting flowers, balloon, go to dinner, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering though, but do men expect things too? Like, is Valentine's Day a holiday mm-hmm. to to tell your woman that you love her and to to admire her, like you know to you know to adorn her, or is it for both people? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Good question. Um, I think Valentine's Day should be a day that we celebrate our marriage or Ooh. celebrate our love or we celebrate each other. Um, I never really bought into this might be a whole nother podcast when I say this. Okay. I never bought into the whole happy life, happy wife. You're disappointed in me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, listen. Because that is one of the questions. No, listen, that I said to myself, Lord, God is amazing. That's one of the questions that I told myself that I was going to ask every man oh. who came on this podcast. What does, does that statement mean to them? Happy wife, happy life. What does that mean to him? And when we started our series, I just didn't do it. Uh-huh. So this is so good because now you're going to answer. What does that statement mean to you? Um, I don't agree with the statement. So the statement don't necessarily mean anything to me okay you don't agree Um, with it but the point of it to me is that men have to be happy also and i don't necessarily believe that that men should be specific or intentional about making their woman happy without the woman in in reverse being intentional about making their their man happy and marriages are struggling Mm -hmm. and so difficult right now and that's why we're doing this series Mm -hmm. and so everything i talk about is how do we have both parties Say, I want my marriage to be better. Mm. I want my marriage to be stronger. Mm-hmm. I want my marriage to be celebrated. Mm-hmm. I want my marriage to be great. Everything we dream and imagine our marriage to be, yeah. like we got to be intentional to that. That's not a gift, mm-hmm. right? That's not like it's just easy. That's right. Marriage is the most difficult thing that any of us will attempt to do. Mm. Somebody got to start saying it, right? Well, it's, it's the most true. difficult. It's true. It's work. Right. It's work and it's, and it's intentional work. Like mm-hmm. you have to sit down and think about how can I be a better husband today? Yes. Right. And so that's why we're talking about. You know, we definitely focus in on our men to finish out our series. Yeah. And I will say this, that women need to also ask ourselves, how can I be a better wife? Wait, so it it, it really, so when Valentine's Day comes along Mm -hmm. or any type of thing like this, when we talk about happy wife, happy life, Mm -hmm. is we need each individual spouse to sit down and say, how can I be better? Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Like, how can I be better? Mm -hmm. And so if the woman's ever sitting around like, he better make me happy. Then right. I'll make him happy. Right. That ain't going to work for your marriage. That's right. Right. And That's if the right. man is only thinking, I can just do Valentine's Day. I don't need to do her birthday or anniversary or Christmas or summer. Mm-hmm. Then that ain't going to work either. Right? right. And so all of us have to spend as much time as we can trying to be intentional about making marriages great. No, that's good. And people need the side should ever wait for a holiday to be special. Not at to all. To be intentional to engage, to take care of your baby. Take you care. need to be doing that all year round. And that is what's going to help you get some sex. Get, what? Tell them how to, let's just jump into it. What, I almost forgot we was talking about sex today. How did, did you really That's almost forget? I ain't even, I've been thinking about it for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're talking about how do we get, for, for the men, Mm-hmm. that are in difficult marriages um how do we get back to having great sex in marriage mm-hmm. right that's that's the goal of this podcast is just giving men some pointers on what to do what we've forgotten to do what we used to do how we bring that back oh that's so good but i think even in addition to that because you can be in a, a marriage that's not when you say difficult marriages right what mm-hmm. does that even mean so you can you can be in a marriage that's thriving and still want to have more sex, right? Yes. Um, and so what I will say, and I said I've said this in one of the podcasts before, but what research shows is that on average, healthy sex, what it looks like is is having two <laughs> healthy sexual per experiences. Day. Oh, per was, week. Oh, oh, per week. My bad. You're going to edit that out for me. I'm not editing nothing. <laughs> so, yes. So, and yes, some men do feel find that hard to believe. Mm-hmm. But this is on average. On average. So, when we're thinking about married couples, on average, married couples, healthy, they'd have a healthy sex life, are having sex two times per week. Now, 
Oh, I, oh you, you want to speak about it. Well, no, I'm just saying that that's on average. <clears throat> and I do believe that a lot of men are imagining that all these men are having sex all the time. And they're the only ones that's not having sex four and five times a week, or as you would say, two times a day. Mm -hmm. But the reality is men aren't sharing this. Men don't mm -hmm. talk about it. And women don't talk about it either because mm -hmm. they don't want nobody going to have, trying to have sex with a man. Mm -hmm. So they don't talk about it, but on average, and this is healthy. Y'all know there are a lot of relationships out here that are only having sex once a month. Yeah. Disappointing. Yes. And if you were to look at them, y'all know I'm, me. These are clients who come to me. So if you were to look at them, you would assume because they cute, because they working, because they together, because they show up to church or because you see them walking up and down the street or you see them at the Walmart that they screwing. They're getting it popping. Yeah, but they're not getting it popping because there are other things that get in the way of sex. So first point for the man I have and I have four points today. The first point is no smile, no sex. No smile, no, no sex. smile, no sex. If you haven't put a smile on that woman's face today, okay, don't try to have sex with her. Okay. And so we're talking to, we're talking about as a man, mm -hmm. you can't go all day long. You haven't talked to your woman. You haven't complimented your woman. You haven't asked her how her day was. You haven't had any communication with her. You haven't said anything inspiring. You, you know, don't just at 1130 at night now you're trying to get someone y'all haven't really had a relationship all day long i agree i agree yeah 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 so you can't be um you know short i'm gonna say short um you know in your conversation with right. your partner or be dismissive right right or um or overlook them go out, leave, come back, and then think that when you come home, you're just going to say roll over right. and you're going to get whatever you want. You're going to have right. sex. So I agree. If that's what that means. Yes. Yeah. Uh, then so, I, okay, I'm down so with the smile. And so it's, a being, yes, it's, it's about being intentional, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting in the bed. You think to yourself as a man, what have I done today to make this woman smile, to make her happy, to make her feel good about herself, to make her good, feel good about our marriage, our relationship, whatever. Have I done anything today? Have I made any effort today as a man to make this woman want to connect with me or feel connected to me? And if I haven't done that, go and roll over yourself and go to sleep. Oh, that's so good. Okay. I agree with that. Second point. Come on, second, second point. Okay. Second point. Men, you you haven't made her feel loved, but want, but now you want the loving. Right. And so what that means is no smile, no sex is about that day. Right. And now we're talking about love over days. Okay. How do you how do you make her feel? Um, what are you guys doing? How's your relationship? Tap in, check in. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, how, how's work been this week? How are you feeling? How, you know, was she sick? Were you sick? Are you guys in a bad place? What's going on? Like, do you make her feel loved mm -hmm. in general? Right. Because now we're expressing love. We want to have love. We want to make love. Mm -hmm. But do you feel loved? And so you may have to sometimes just go to your partner and ask them, how do you feel? Do you feel loved? Mm -hmm. That's so good. How do you feel? Do you feel loved? Yeah. And and how do I make you feel more loved? And when I've done this before, my wife, my wife has said to me, hey, you're not confirming me. You know, like she needed that confirmation of who she was as a wife, as a mother, as a woman. Mm -hmm. She needed that. Not that she needed as as if she was insecure. Or need, she needed, she, she wanted you. to hear she it wanted from it me. From you. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm her yeah. partner. I'm her life partner. Mm -hmm. She wants to hear it from me. Mm -hmm. or, or she needed affirmations, you know, like things like that. Like, what do you need specifically? We've been married. 19 years soon. Right. And so it's like, what do you need? Like, we have to be able to ask that question. And then I had to be able to sit to myself and humbly ask, OK, am I doing what she needs? Mm -hmm. You know, can I do more? Can I do better? Mm -hmm. uh, what can I provide to help help her arrive and know and feel loved on a daily basis? Oh, yeah. No, that's really good. Yeah, that's good. Making her feel loved. Yeah. Because if a woman doesn't feel loved. Yeah, then she's not going to want to make love to you. Not at all. Oh, you just said that and thought that through. It's very simple like that, yeah, right? Because it's so true. Yeah. Why would I want to do that? Why would a woman want to do that? Yes. Yeah. Why would a woman want to do that? And I guess as men, sometimes when we get married, we we start to move into this zone. Where we feel like 
we just get to have it whenever we want it and we don't have to do anything for it. Just give it to me just because I'm the husband. Give it to me because I paid the mortgage. Give it to me because I, I bought dinner. You know, I swept the floor. I cut the grass. I washed the car. All of these things that don't impact the woman, that don't make the woman feel loved. They make her feel maybe appreciated to some extent or that, you know, you did something on their behalf. Well, or how does safe. It make you yeah, <clears throat> I was just going to say, right, right, safe in some way, like knowing that the borders, you controlled the borders. So I feel safe, like you've taken care of this and you've taken care of that and you've taken care of that. So for a woman, like I feel safe. However, does that make me, does that make my libido rise to the sky? Not necessarily, right? But if you make me feel like I'm loved, if you make me feel like like you see me, you know, then that would make a woman feel like, you know, yeah, like I want to love him too. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and women definitely, uh, yeah, this is why it's important to be intentional okay. and to talk directly to your woman and ask her what she needs. Because some women do get turned on by the man washing the dishes. Some women do get turned on by the man paying the bills. A lot of women don't. So that's why you have to ask, you have to talk about it, you have to know, and then be willing. Uh, one of the things I had to graduate to is is learning that how I love my wife mm -hmm. may not be how she wants to be loved. Ooh, that's good. You know, so I have to tap in and say, okay, I'm loving you like this, but what do you need? Mm -hmm. And for my wife, she was more of a words person. Mm -hmm. She she needed those confirmations and affirmations and things like that. Mm -hmm. I was a doer. Like I'm, I'm doing something for you that expressed love, mm. but she didn't want it expressed. She wanted said, mm. she wanted me to verbalize, Hey, I love you. Hey, I need you. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're amazing. Hey, I'm happy to have you as my wife. I'm lucky to have mm. you as my wife. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn that over time that the act like, and, and by example, I will be that guy, man, that'll take my wife and we'll go to a five-star restaurant mm -hmm. and then go to Ritz Carlton and spend the night there. Mm. And after a while, I'll be like, Hey, Wife, you didn't really treat me no differently. I felt like I should have been treated differently. Oh, that's good. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I didn't, I didn't broke the bank. You know, on a regular Tuesday. That's you know good. what I mean? That's Tuesday, right. Thursday, and she would be like, "Hey, I go to Olive Garden and and, and Holiday Inn." Mm. She was like, "I'm happy to be with you. Mm, it good. doesn't matter where we go, mm -hmm. but it does matter how you make me feel." It's so good. And so I can't just take her places and not love on her. Yes. Those things, money, things like that did not matter to my wife. And there's a lot of women like that. And there's a lot of women not like that. Right. You want to be very careful about saying you got to know your own woman. And that's so good. I think that that's what, yes, I'm confirming that you need to know your woman. That's right. And what it is that she needs and what it is that she wants. And you can use, what is it? That book, uh, the five love languages. Like that's a good way. That's a good short little way of learning each other's. Well, even and expressing what your love language is to her, but then for her to even express or for you to learn what her love language is to you. Because most times, not all times, but most times they're different. And so when we try to express ourselves to our partners, we're expressing them through what we believe, those glasses, what we believe our love language is. So our assumption is, is that's hers too. When most times, it's different. And so if you want to speak to her heart and if you want to get her ready, then you need to know by asking her, find out what is it and, and how is it that you can love her? I thought when I was young that like hugging my wife was an expression of me confirming my love for her. Okay. And then I learned later that that's what I like. Mm, that's and so right. I only knew how to give to her what I wanted to receive. That's right. Instead of focusing in on what does she need to receive? Absolutely. And and I learned that she and she when I asked her about it, she would say specifically, "Hey, I want you to tell me and then hug me." Mm. Hey, I love you and then hug her because the words is what spoke to her spirit and not my physical touch, which is one of the uh, five love languages is physical touch mm -hmm. and, and words of affirmation. Words of affirmation was hers. That's so that's right. how we how we get to that point. Yes. Uh, uh, third point is okay. when we talking about how we get back to having great sex. Right. Okay. We want, in our marriages, mm -hmm. we want to get back to or continue to have great sex. Yes. Right. And so the third point was men, we've gotten lazy. When setting the mood or creating a romantic environment. Oh, that's good. Lazy. 
That's so good. Like when we trying to get the woman we dating, we uh -huh. done done everything. We didn't got the rose petals out. Okay. We didn't got the bath ready. We didn't okay. got the wine or whatever. Okay. We've really been intentional about how to blow their mind. Mm. Like we've thought about it weeks in advance, mm -hmm. planned farther in advance. And now we kind of like, hey, what you want to do? Ooh. And now toot it up. Or just tap and roll. Tap and roll over. That's... Or just, you know, just slide it down. Right. Okay. We don't go too far. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think. I think that the average woman yeah. still wants their man mm -hmm. to plan for them. Absolutely. And show like like effort and energy mm -hmm. um and and doing something on their behalf. Like I've thought about this in advance. I've thought about you in advance. Mm -hmm. Um and I thought about what makes you happy. How do how do I make you feel like you're the one for me? Oh no, I think that's so good. But I don't ever want to lead our brothers astray, right? Because I think that that is important, right? Mm -hmm. Preparation, you know, put effort in. Like when you when you were first dating, you know, put some of that effort in. However, this is another thing. Things probably in your life have changed. Your circumstances probably have changed from the time that you were dating. If you're mm -hmm. dating or married, things change over time. Mm -hmm. So I think to also be cognizant, meaning be aware mm -hmm. of... What else may be, you know, because this is what I'm, I was thinking is you could do all that. So you can go out tomorrow and buy all these rose petals and you can run the bath water mm -hmm. and all those things. Right. And expect like, OK, Stephen and Andre said, if I do this, because this is what I did when we first started dating, mm -hmm. I'm about to get some. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is there are so many other reasons why women you know, may have low libido or may just not be into it. And you just, the rose petals is not going to solve that. So, and I love what you said about the loving and the smile. However, I also want you to check in. Mm -hmm. When I say check in, meaning if women out here, let's just say, if they have so many things that they have going on, Okay, so like if they have to be parents, they got to go pick up the kids from the school. They got to come home and cook dinner. If they have to um, go to work and come home, right? If they have to clean up or do laundry, if they have all of these things, and these are the things now that attracted you to this woman. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why you liked her and you were drawn to and you felt like she was a keeper because she does all of these things. Mm -hmm. Now, if she has all of these things to do, and now she gets home and you got rose petals and you done started the tub and you thinking, oh, yeah, this is what they said. So I'm going to get some. <laughs> <laughs> and she like, mm, not tonight. Just pause for a second. Don't get upset. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm saying is sometimes you got to tap in to ask her, what does she need mm -hmm. or what can you alleviate from her load because you with them rose petals and with the bath water for her, when she sees that, that could feel like another thing on her list to do. Yeah. Um, like when I talk about my wife, my wife is not, she doesn't get moved by actions, but she does. Her energy is increased by not having to do certain things. Mm. So when we were early in our marriage, I would say, yo, I need it. Like, I, I got to get it from you. You know what I mean? Like, what do I need to do to get it? Mm -hmm. And she would say things like, hey, you need to help with this schoolwork. You need to wash some dishes. You need to fold some clothes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that if I did those things, that those things would turn her on. It would just free those things from her schedule. So now she has more energy and more time to do things that I want her to do. That's right. That's right. And, and she doesn't have the stress and the pressure because what facts these are facts what science proves and this is for men and women is that your libido is affected by the amount of stress that you have so if i am feeling stressed with all of these things in my head i may not express them out of my mouth because this is just what i'm doing my daily things it's just right. what i do right as a woman so if i'm feeling stressed then i need to alleviate the stress so i can even tap into my libido like i can't even tap into my libido if i'm feeling overwhelmed with everything that i have going on so that's where it is helpful for you to come in and ask me how is it that i can help you and what is it what is it that you need me to do so you and i can have our time so we can both go on a fantasy together mm.
a fantasy. Come on, I, man. I, I think we got to stay there for a minute. I think you're making a really good point that I actually had not thought about in terms of how stress directly impacts the libido. Yes, I can't absolutely. even say libido good. Like I'm <laughs> libido. <laughs> Libido. <laughs> libido. You, said it. you know it good. what is the libido? Is somebody out there right now trying to Google? What, what? Well, you know, it's your desire, right? Mm -hmm. It's your di desire for sex. So your libido. Some people have a higher libido than others, but stress affects your libido. So this is this even happens. Men who are here, there have been men who've come to me with their wives and without their wives who have low libido, or they may be experiencing erectile dysfunction which has a lot to do with them being stressed. Yes, so 90% of stress, I mean, I'm sorry, 90% of having a high libido and desire is up here. Mm. Yeah, it has to do with this head up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where desire comes from, 90% of it. Absolutely. So how do we make sure that we can generate that is we have to tap into what's stressing you out and how can we alleviate the stress so that you can relax and go on a fantasy with me? Do you, when you have men that you're working with, mm -hmm. um, do you specifically talk to them about that? Do when, when you've had couples that you that were saying, hey, we're having a difficulty in our marriage, in our sex life. Um, are you able to like pinpoint, hey, your wife is stressed out. Oh yeah, because we talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because he may be saying to her, I don't have, I'm not having, I want more sex. I don't have more sex. And then once she starts talking, then she starts to, like, that's not even on my list of things to do. Like, because I have this mm -hmm. and that. And so then as she starts to speak about it, then that's how we dial down. Mm -hmm. And we're talking to men, right? So yes, so that does happen for women and for men. So men have come here with their wives and the women have said, that they want more sex because they haven't had sex because he hasn't desired her. They want to feel desired by him. And a lot of times when we drill down the number one cause that I've heard outside of um, side effects to medication mm -hmm. for certain illnesses, mm -hmm. but the number one issue that I've heard that's related to that um, is um, money. Mm -hmm. So if a man is really stressed about money, mm -hmm. about having enough money, you know, having like issues at work that's related to money mm -hmm. um, or the wife may be spending a lot of their money mm -hmm. because in what he's learned through childhood, through growing up, that being a part of a, a man, being a part of that, a part of being a good man is that he supports the family financially. Right. And so when he feels like that is threatened by anything, so if it's his business at work, if business is slow, if maybe he, um, I don't know, th thinks that he could be getting fired or thinks that they're having layoffs or if whatever money he's had where he's planned for the family, she's, the wife is, or girlfriend is going over budget or spending too much, you know, then that impacts libido for men. Absolutely. Yes. Good, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, and, and, and remember, we're, we're talking about how we get back to having great sex, right? Yes. Great sex, not just good sex, because we're married. We're only, you know, uh, we're only having sex with our partner. This is all we get. This is the only partner we have. At some point, you have to graduate to where you're more concerned about having your wife be pleasured and reaching her peak, oh, reaching yeah. her orgasm. Um I, I, I'll be the first to admit as a man, I was just only about getting mine mm. and I didn't even know how to tap into what she needed. I didn't know how I wasn't patient enough to learn or to understand. I thought we was both just racing. Like it was like mm. they fired a gun and we both just take off running and we trying to go get to our orgasm. Well, really it's not like that. Like, like the woman is, is more delicate. Not all women, of course, right? Each teach his own right. and there's different women. You have to learn your woman. And I had to learn to really, Ask my wife, what is it that she needed? Mm -hmm. How do I help her get there? Be specific. And she, for years, didn't tell me. Like, for years, didn't tell me exactly what she needed right. and how to get there. And so I would, I would challenge men that, that if you start having better experiences because you're tapped in and you're talking to her and you're communicating and you're a little bit more careful, a little bit more gentle uh, or rough. Maybe she likes it rough That's and you're right. not rough enough, but That's you right. ask her uh -huh. what she needs in order to arrive. And then as y'all start building that momentum of having better sex and mm -hmm. then it becomes good, then it becomes great. Then it becomes something that she needs because now she's getting it the way she wants it. Mm. And so we work our way up to us both meeting at that precipice where 
we are both getting exactly what we need sexually. Mm, I think that is so good, right? And so, um, yeah, so we can just say that a lot of times when people, when you're young, and you first start having sex, you said jump around like a bunny rabbit, right? Mm -hmm. You just jump on. And I think a lot of times men, and and I think men were taught, I think this is a part, this is tied to a part of uh, men's self-esteem too mm -hmm. and their self-worth is that if they just jump on and pound, 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 and then she climaxes because she will, that's what they assume that she will, she hoops, she hollers and she climaxes, then they've done a good job and it, you know, that, you know, then it's on and it's popping. Mm -hmm. However, let me just say this to you. Do you know that there's a large percentage of women who are lying about mm -hmm. climaxing, like they have never even gotten or have experienced not only a climax, but an orgasm. So that's specifically it. They haven't even orgasmed. Mm -hmm. and, this, and this is where there comes an issue because women are afraid to tell their men mm -hmm. that they have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. And then for women, even though this is our men's show, and I don't know if women are in here listening or watching, then it would benefit the couple for you to tell the, your partner yeah. that, or maybe lead him in the way to get you to orgasm. However, the fear is, is that men do, do men really even want to know? Because they say, a lot of men say they want to know. Because they think that they're going to hear that they can do it or mm -hmm. they can make it happen, right? Mm -hmm. Or since so many women have hooped and hollered and lied and act, acted as if it's happened mm -hmm. and then have assumed that it's happened. So then when one person tell them that it did is not happening, instead of them looking at what they're doing or not doing, they put it on that person. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yes. I, and I actually have a question for you for that. Okay. I knew something was coming. Uh, I felt myself uh, just talking, 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 talking. Okay. Come on. Why do women fake orgasms? Mm, I think because they don't want to bruise the man's ego. I think because they want the man to stop banging on them. Hey, family. Come on over here. Because I have something for you. Starting off with a go to guide for keeping your minds healthy and strong. This right here is the Bible to mental health. It's your mental health Bible. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. Mm, everything that you need to know about keeping your minds healthy and strong is in this go-to guide. Where you get it from? Well, you get it from awisebrown.com backslash shop but in this go-to guide honey in this mental health bible you know what you're going to find out you're going to find out the benefits of aromatherapy oh, and how it can shift your mood but guess what you don't have to go anyplace else to look for your aromatherapy because your girls got you okay you can get some aromatherapy here this is aromatherapy is in this candle this is called a slice of happiness it makes me tingle like literally makes me tingle a slice of happiness this is a cruelty free candle with no parabens no formaldehyde and no known suspected carcinogenics now you know you go out here and you find these candles that smell good but are they good for you are they good for your brain come on now get real with yourself well this one smells delicious and it's good for you made with essential oils it's a soy candle amazing uh you can burn it or you can just walk by and smell it lord have mercy it's so good okay so that's your your candle your aromatherapy which raises the dopamine in your brain that's your natural feel good no transmitters in your brain all right y'all and oh i'm a part of you you're a part of me we are a family we got hoodies now, and these are unisex hoodies, and they wear well, they wash well, and they feel so good. So you can wear them over your clothes, you know what I'm saying, and look dope, or you can wear them as your clothes with nothing under them, which I like to do often. And when you travel everywhere, I mean, every time I wear them, I'm moving around, people are always asking me whether I'm traveling, going to the supermarket, what's that, who's that? And I'm like, 
Mental health is a lifestyle. Because see, this is on the back, okay? They come in white and they come in black. I'm like, join the family. Mental health is a lifestyle podcast. So there you go. Family, don't you ever say that I ain't give you nothing. You get all of these things from awisebrown.com backslash shop. All right. Hey, I got your goods. I got you. You don't have to go anyplace else. I'll see you on the other side. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, they, they want it to be over. They want it to be over. They, they've decided that, okay, he's just trying to get his. Once he get his, this will be over. I'm not right. enjoying this right now. Okay. So let me fake it because I'm not enjoying it anyway. And once I fake it, then he'll think he's done his job. Right. And then he will climax and then it'll be over. It'll and be so over. that's why women should really work harder. Well, we it's about men. It's about men, right? And yeah, we want our we men. Yeah, because we're talking about, right. We're going to talk to women later. We're going right. to talk to women but later. We're just saying that we want our women to just find their voice. Yes. And to make sure they're heard. Yeah, but I'm. In a gentle way. No, no, no. I love that. But I'm asking you, right? Are men really ready for that? No, that's a graduation step too. That's like a PhD. Um, sometimes it's not even necessarily that we're ready. It is, can we even hear it? Can we even hear that we're not the best in the world in the bed? Like all men think that we're the best. But see, that's so interesting because I'm not saying that she's going to say to you, you're not the best in the world. I'm just going to say to you that she's saying, can you do uh, this a little differently? Or yeah, or I haven't orgasmed. Like mm. yeah, no orgasm. I actually was an adult. I probably was over thirty okay. before I learned that women didn't have orgasms all the time. Mm. I really didn't know. Like, why would I know? You know, unless I read That's right. that. That's right. Or or a woman had to tell me that. That's right? right. I read that somewhere. I was like, wow. The average woman, I think I read, does not have an orgasm. Not every time they have sex. All right. And um, and a lot of women have never had it. I'm talking about women are fifty years old and have never orgasmed. Yes. That's mind boggling, right? And so and so. Mm. The thing was, when when you talk about men, can we hear that? And so this is a great point, too, for men. Um, make sure you're asking your partner just just to confirm. Don't don't just base it off them screaming and yelling and climbing the, off the bed and passing out and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that's a little bit much, the passing out thing. But, um, but, 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 but when like they wake that, up. Though, but men might like that. When they wake up. <laughs> <laughs> when they wake up, ask them uh -huh. if. If there's something you can do better, be humble enough to ask. Well, really, in marriage, all of us should be humble enough to say, how can I be a better partner? How can I be a better sexual partner? How can I make you happier? How can I please you more? Yeah, I think so. I I, I agree with you. I, I was just thinking, I'm just thinking about men. I think men have to be in a space. Yeah where they're open to hearing it. I think that's what I'm, that's, that's the thing. Right. And, and I would never want to put on a man what you need to do. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to have more, if you want your partner to have more sex with you yes. and you want her to be engaged and to want to, then you have to give her something to desire. Yeah. Okay. No, that's it. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. I really just wanted to build on that point of, Sometimes we look at at sex as one experience, like That's on good. this day of having sex. Well, Whereas to the good. woman, if she has a bad sexual experience today, then she won't give it to you tomorrow or the next day or the day after that because she's thinking about the bad experience that she had on the first day, mm -hmm. right? And so, men, we have to be cognizant of are we having good sexual experiences, like all of them, not not all of them, but just generally speaking. Yeah, but listen, so from, no, because from a woman's perspective, this was what I was going to say. I think if it's a woman that is a, a jump off, that might be different. Mm -hmm. She ain't going to call you back again. She ain't going to, she may, I mean, right. she, if she bored and there ain't nobody else around, you know, she may let you come back or whatever. Right. So I think, but for the most part of you, you know, don't really perform, then she may not want to see you again. But I think if it's your partner, a long-term yeah. partner, or if it's your wife, then absolutely she wants to see you again and she wants to work with you because as you would say, y'all all you got. Yes. So it's, if you, you know, everybody can have a bad day. Everybody can have a bad day. Yeah. So I think it's more about communication, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Let's see where did I miss or if I didn't miss or, and that's why I'm saying, okay, are men, are you guys open to your woman being honest about that really wasn't hitting on too much. So let's kind of, let's go again yeah. or do it a little bit like this or mm -hmm. do it a little bit like that. 
that that's that's what I'm asking you, that's, Stephen. That's a a great question. Um, I think it just takes time for us to arrive at that point to, to maturity, to the maturity and the humility Ooh. to say to ourselves that even though so what happens with sex with men is that all our lives we just start having sex, right? Whatever age that is, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever. And we're not corrected hardly ever, right? That's right. Through the process of speaking from a man. That's right. Um, That's right. I don't know that a, a woman that I was in a like boyfriend relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, if a woman ever said anything to me about not liking sex or right. something with me. I got you. And if she hooping and she, she hooping, hooping and, and hollering, hollering and passing out like... and rolling on the floor, you know, all this <laughs> they theatrics, doing all that, huh? tan up stuff, oh, that was... like the lamp, she done pulled the lamp down and the chandelier. She done all that, mm-hmm. you know? And so then when I get married, I think that, okay, I've been the best in the world my whole mm-hmm. life. So I'm not really ready to hear that I'm not the best. Oh, that's so good when you don't even know. You don't even know. You just <laughs> you don't and she even... she didn't have, she didn't really had the best. <laughs> she had that six five NBA player, you know, that was gentle, you know, and was and had more foreplay. Mm. Like we haven't talked about foreplay and okay. the time that it take to really warm the woman up. Some women need that, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I never understood. Actually, I wish I'd have brought this point up earlier. I never understood men that are impatient and don't have the patience to do foreplay Mm -hmm. because I think that only adds to the experience. Mm -hmm. So whether that be the compliments throughout the day or taking a shower together or massages or something like that, just taking your time to to love on your woman, caress your woman, lotion her down, lotion her up, all that. And y'all have a whole sexual experience. Mm -hmm. Another point I want to bring up too is um, scheduling sex. Some people frown upon scheduling sex. Mm-hmm. The way I look at that is, is that you, you're not scheduling just the, the physical act. Okay. You're scheduling the experience. Mm-hmm. So if you're scheduling it, the schedule is for two hours, not 10 minutes, mm-hmm. right? Because you're scheduling time spent together. Mm-hmm. Maybe the time spent together, you start out, you know, dinner, then shower, then massage. Then we lay in the bed just talking for a while, huddling, hugging each other, snuggling up, you know, spooning, whatever. And then we get to the sex later once we've had a good amount of foreplay. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I I think it's very individualized. Mm -hmm. So some couples can work with the whole schedule, especially if if you have young children, maybe. But then for some, for some couples, you know, the men are really into the whole schedule thing. You know, they want a more spontaneous, um, and I'm sure some men here can agree, Mm -hmm. they want a more spontaneous experience, right? Not so rigid, not so scheduled. Um, And I will say this too, for women, scheduling sex can also feel like another thing on their list of things to do. Yes. You got me? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I just want you to, I just need you to be men to be cognizant that it's just not that simple. Like it's not just like tricks and all the tricks will work because there's so many other things. Um, and I want to mention them after you say your fourth thing, mm-hmm. because um, I don't, I don't want men to personalize, personalize why they may not be having as much sex as they want in their relationships. Mm-hmm. Right. So I know we're talking about having more sex and more. You, what did you call this? More great, great, fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. fantastic. You actually said a good word. You said <laughs> fantasy. Oh, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So, so fantastic sex. Right. But I, I don't want you to think that it's just about you and your performance because that's what oh, society that's has told men that it's about, you know, if you do this, bang, 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 or you do this trick or you do that. When a lot of times women don't even orgasm from those things. That's a great point. What you just said about mm-hmm. you get back. And that's the goal of the, the, the episode. That's the goal of everything we're doing. When we're talking to men mm-hmm. is how do we get back to having great sex in marriage? And we cannot get back to great sex by just having a great performance. Very good. You got to have the great, every other things like great love, yes. great communication, yes. um, great patience. Yes. Um, um, just being uh, considerate, being kind, being gentle, um, and then great foreplay. Yes. Um, um, and a part of foreplay, I wanted to say this when you were talking about the foreplay and the lotion and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, but you can do all that lotion and all that stuff. And, but maybe that may not work. Mm. But just listening to her, like literally engaging and listening to her without falling asleep. The power of the communicate without falling asleep, the power of the communication 
I think a lot of us men have us men have missed on the importance of that. Yeah. Um, I know early on in my marriage, my wife consistently said or felt like I didn't listen. Mm. Um, and I thought like, I, I get paid to listen. People pay me to listen. And she was like, no, nah, you're not really listening. You're mm. not really uh, listening to a level of where I was maintaining what I heard and could regurgitate it back to her mm. um, or changing my actions or things I'm doing based on what I'm listening from her. Or just, you know, and maybe sometimes the talking too, this is a great point for men, I, I believe anyway, mm -hmm. is that is that it's not always that we're having some significant conversation. It is just that we're partners and she wants to talk to me yes. about whatever it is. Yes. It could be just talking about Susan or Karen at the job that's right. or the person that cut her off driving home from work or yes. whatever, or something that's going on with a family friend or whatever. Yes. And are we fully 100% engaged and locked in and paying attention yes. and just having a conversation, like liking each other, like we did when we were dating. When you first dated, when you, exactly. When you, you first dating, everything was important. <laughs> You remembering all the co-workers' names? Susan, Susan Thomas did what? Yes, sir. You remember that's everything. Right. You remember that's her whole right. last name, her that's, title? That's right, because you were engaged. That's yes. the thing. You were engaged. So being engaged with her, whatever that is, because she may not like lotion, but that might be her foreplay. You got me? It's to engage with her, to take your time with her, meaning just literally with her her like whatever it is that she wants to do and i don't want to set men up to fail right mm -hmm. so because we kind of giving you steps of things to do but i also want you to be cognizant of the time of day mm. now it ain't just about you and mm -hmm. remember it's not just about your performance so are you, are you an early riser do you stay up late at night and you ready to do it at night or the mm -hmm. more you know what I mean? so taking in consideration your partner could because usually what I found is most times the opposites. Yeah. So when you choose the time that you want to make these moves, you have to be cognizant of what time it is. Because if she's an early riser and she's been going since up teen o'clock, mm -hmm. and so now she got that list of all these things to do, and so now because you late, you like to roll around late and go to bed late. Mm -hmm. Now you want to tap, 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 turn at whatever nine o'clock ten o'clock how you gonna get that that energy and the fantasy like you're not going to get that and it has nothing to do with you has nothing to do with her how much love she has for you has nothing to do with your performance it is just it's just it's just it just doesn't make sense logistically like mm -hmm. she could be tired or worn out and mm -hmm. that's why tapping in and asking these questions how can i help right starting like you said smiling from early in the day checking in with her mm -hmm. seeing what's going on starting to take some of those things off her list of things to do so that at a certain time whatever you know her peak time is whatever that time is it's just y'all two by yourselves and then she has she's stress-free you stress-free and she has the freedom to enjoy you as you would have to enjoy her can, can can I say what I what I really want to say? I've been hold, holding on to and rocking the whole time. Just well, before I can't wait okay, to say. no, I want you I, I, I want you to say that because uh, I, in one second, I just mm -hmm. want to say this, right? Because in addition to the reasons why, I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. sometimes these uh, marriages or relationships kind of lose their fizzle with sex. Mm -hmm. As I would say, sometimes it could be men's performance, but for the most part. It may not be right. It's mm -hmm. just tapping into what it is that she needs mm -hmm. um, changes, life changes, mm -hmm. life changes. So if we have additional stress because we've moved or we have a baby or we have kids and we running around, that is a way to kind of take away desire and rob you of libido, of your partner. So you have to be cognizant of that mm -hmm. trauma, trauma. It's very important to mention trauma. Your partner may have been traumatized surrounding sex before she even got with you. Yeah. And so that plays a part in her desire or her libido, you know, during the relationship, maybe at certain points in the relationship. Loss of attraction. Now, when I say loss of attraction, loss of attraction for you could be. You know, you keeping yourself up, like what you doing? And it ain't like you, you have to have the same six pack that you had when y'all first start dating, mm -hmm. but are you at least motivated to keeping yourself up and you just not laying on the couch, just pouring beers, drinking them, crushing them, pouring them on your stomach and sitting them on the side. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you putting some effort in to keeping yourself together? You can't just 
crushing them jokes. It's like drinking, crushing, drink, and drink, 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 and drink. drink. Just... Ain't nobody even else there. No one's. You just hear it in your head, like somebody telling you to drink. <laughs> right. So you know you need to keep yourself together, just like you want your woman to keep herself together, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you want to keep desire going, you got to desire yourself. Do you desire yourself, brothers? Mm. Do you desire yourself? Uh-oh. And I'm not saying you have to have the same six pack that you had when you first met her. That's not what I'm saying. But just the fact that you even engage in trying to keep yourself together, mm. that is what is attractive. How do you feel about yourself? Mm. Another one also is loss of attraction for themselves. So mm. sometimes, you know, your partner, the women may not feel sexy. Yeah. So this has nothing to do with your performance. I need you to get that. Mm. Nothing to do with your performance if she doesn't feel like she's attractive. Yeah. If she doesn't feel like she's attractive, she can't even fathom that you would think she's attractive. So all while you thinking you want to hit it and quit it or squid it or whatever the word is. Squid it. Right. Well, I don't even know. But you want to do that and she's all like, uh, like I don't even want to see myself like, uh, mm-hmm. just want to get through it. Mm-hmm. However, if she's feeling sexy, that's going to raise her desire. Now, a part of that is her, right? Working on herself. Mm-hmm. But brothers, y'all can help out with that too. What about complimenting her body? Mm-hmm. complimenting her body parts, complimenting her eyes, complimenting her hand, compliment her, spend mm-hmm. some time looking at her and telling her how beautiful that she is. So I just kind of wanted to put those things out um, because, you know, there's a lot of reasons why sex becomes a, uh, a chore or a item on a list uh, while you're married. Yes, yes, yes. And this is another one. And then I'm going to let you mm-hmm. hit it with the ooh mm-hmm. is resentment. Mm. So a lot of times when women are harboring resentment from, th- I'm going to say it again because I kind of messed that up. Mm-hmm. A lot of times when women are harboring resentment from some of your missteps, the buildup of that, holding on to lingering resentment robs them of their libido or desire to lay down and roll around with you and have Mm -hmm. the fantasy. Mm -hmm. Got me? However, however, you can fix that by doing this work. Because when you do this work, it kind of wipes most of that stuff away. Then she sees that. Then she can trust you again. If a woman can't trust you, then she's not going to feel safe enough to go there with you. Mm -hmm. So she needs to trust you and she can trust you by watching your behavior turned up. You're saying so many good things. Um, I hope men go back and listen to it again. Mm. Um, Listen to this podcast again. I'll summarize here my points I made, but hoping that people still go back and listen because we said a lot of things. And I think the things that you said about women and their libido, um, men don't really think in terms of their libido. Mm. We think in terms of our sexual needs that's right instead of their libido and the impact that we have on their libido oh that's so um, good can you say that one more time yeah, we just we just don't think about it in terms of the impact that we have on their libido mm. and, and i'm not just talking about like you talked about the stress having an impact on the libido but just yes. our actions or non-actions yes having an impact on Jeez, dude. right and then uh and then like then the final point for me again just a reminder to men that and we've kind of talked a lot about this is just that at some point you got to make that transition where you're much more concerned about her arrival to her peak, to her to her orgasm, you're going to get yours. If you're a man, I'm a, I've been a man a long, long time. For real? Uh, yeah, a long, long time, okay. right? And I, I, it's not very often at all that I ain't get my orgasm. Mm. I probably count on one hand. Because you know men do fake orgasms too. Them dudes is weird. No. I can't call them that. No, you can't. No. It just came out of me. I didn't know to be professional. <laughs> And all that. I just can't say they weird if they if they fake it. Their uh, reasons are women it's, fake. It's, it's but evidence men do. if they fake it. Like what they uh, they just got something in their back and put out, squirted on them. I'm done, girl. I done squirted some toothpaste on you. Like that is me. Just rub it in. Like how how they do that? That's a whole nother. It's probably a whole nother show legal, for you. That's yeah. a that's a whole legal you told. I don't know how they do that. Uh, hey, but you know, it goes back to like we were saying earlier about mm-hmm. um 
happy wife, happy life. Oh. You know, like if 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 man, if you gotta fake it, man, then you gotta communicate. Mm, that's good. You know, so communication is gonna always be important as we work through these things. Absolutely. Okay, so that was your four? Yes. Okay, y'all. So that's good. That's good. That's good. We good. We good. All yeah, right. Good. I just need to add one more. Uh oh. Right. Women sometimes have issues with their hormone levels. Mm. So it does that's not, not necessarily that's not the same thing as the libido. That's two different things. It's two different things. Oh Lord. <laughs> well, and oh, hormones, right? Hormones mm -hmm. affect libido. Mm -hmm. Hormones affect desire. Mm -hmm. So that could also be an issue. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily just about the performance, the bangity bang. It's about all of the things that Stephen said. And if you have communication and you can talk, then y'all talk together and you will come up. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. What physics says is if there's a problem. There is a solution. Uh oh. Oh, you know what? Ladies, oh. I will say to the ladies real quick. Okay, because we done. We, we like done. Finish. We done. We like this. Finish. The after. <laughs> no, ladies, you want them to get it only from you, right? Oh. That's what you want, right? Uh oh. Be in communication. Tell them what you need. Uh -uh. Make it important. We're trying to get back to great sex. So while we're talking to our men, women at least come back and say, hey, are we having great sex or are we just doing it? Okay. You know, is it great? So, so ask that question to yourself. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> you thought I was gonna go? I, I wanted to. But you, you did say, do you only want him to get it from you? Yes. But you do know that him choosing to get it from, from only somewhere else? her. Oh, okay. Well, twice a day, huh? From somewhere else mm -hmm. is betrayal, and that's about his issues. That's about him not going inside the relationship, mm -hmm. but taking an exit for whatever his, his, come on now. Mm -hmm. So you do know that. So that's not an option. We don't want that to be an option as we are trying to rebuild mm -hmm. the man's strength. Mm -hmm. That is not an option as we are rebuilding his esteem, as we are rebuilding his sense of self-worth, taking an exit is not an option. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's not about do you want him to go someplace else? He made a commitment to just go here. And this is where he going to go. Mm -hmm. So he's figuring it out. These men is watching us. They're going to figure, figure it, it out. out. Encourage, Come on we're now. Encouraging our they brothers. committed to figuring it out because mm -hmm. you got you a good one and she wants you, but you got to work with her. You chose her. You chose to commit to figuring it out. Mm -hmm. So ain't no, do you want him to go in? There ain't no such thing as that because we are empowering people out here. Yes. Okay. That's, that's good. What we're doing. That's good. We got to healthy, healthy we, people, it's not work. dysfunction. I marriage, understand this work. Marriage is the hardest thing any of us will ever attempt to do. So, in response to that and, and acknowledging that, now we have to do the work. Yes. You know? And we can do it. And we can do it. And we're giving you tools through the podcast. Yes. Uh, mental health is a lifestyle. Podcast. You know? So, subscribe to the subscribe, podcast. Share it like with a friend. It, share, 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 say, share. Say something in the comments. Please. Ask a question. Yes. Email Andrea. Yes. We'll send you a book. She's going to send. Uh, not everybody. Hold on. Let me. Clarify. We're going to hand out two books. Two books. You, gotta two books. you got to subscribe and you got to email Andrea to yes. say, hey, I listened to the podcast. This is my feedback, good or bad? Yes. So good, That's right. Good or bad? Absolutely. If somebody oh, says yeah. something bad to me, I'm just delete. No, no, no. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm with it I'm, with because it. I want to grow. I, oh, I'm good with constructive criticism. It has to be respectful and constructive. Yes. I don't be having time. You, your, 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 feed, your negative feedback better be good. If you say something about like my hat, these are not bedazzled or jewels. <laughs> they, this just says love oh, is love. dope. Love, love is, is dope. dope. Come no, on, like, Valentine's crazy. Day. It just just shiny. It's love is dope. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a man that mm. loves love. Oh. That's why we're talking about it. So subscribe and follow, share. All right. And we will see you on the next episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast show by your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. See you next time. Next is going to be ladies. Uh oh. We got to bring the ladies in. <laughs>